want to say that I've known Jack for a while. Um, I used to buy gasoline from him years ago. My father-in-law thought he was a very fine person. Uh, he's passed on since too, but I've known uh, Miss Sumner for a long time. Um, I've known parts of the family for a while, so it's uh, my privilege to be able to do the service today for him, and he was a member of Atlantic Lodge Number 2 for many, many years. So, um, without further ado, brethren, family, and friends, the last offices paid to the dead are useful as lessons for the living. From them we are to derive instruction and to consider every solemnity of this kind as a summons to prepare for our dissolution. Notwithstanding the warnings of mortality with which we daily meet, notwithstanding death has established his empire over all the works of nature, yet through some unaccountable infatuation we put from us the thought that we are born to die. We go on from one design to another, add hope to hope, and lay out plans for the fruition of employment of many years, forgetting that we may be suddenly alarmed at the approach of death when we least expect him and at an hour which we probably conclude to be the meridian of our existence. Let the present occasion excite our most serious thoughts and strengthen our resolutions of amendment. As life is uncertain and all earthly pursuits are vain, let us no longer postpone consideration of the all-important concerns of eternity, but while time and opportunity permit, seek to prepare for our dissolution. While in the, let us, while in this state of existence, support with propriety the character of our profession, advert to the nature of our solemn ties, and pursue with assiduity the sacred tenets of our order. Above all, let us seek the favor of the eternal God, whose goodness and power know no bounds, at whose bar of infinite justice and mercy we must also soon appear. May we be true and faithful, and may we live in love and die in peace. So may we. May we profess what is good and always act agreeable to our profession. So may we. May the Lord bless us and prosper us, and may all our good intentions be crowned with success. So may we. Glory be to God in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill toward men. So may we. Now, and henceforth, and forever. This lambskin, or white leather apron, is an emblem of innocence and the time-honored badge of a free and accepted mason. More ancient than the golden fleece or woman eagle, more honorable than the star and garter when worthily worn. This emblem I now deposit with the body of our deceased brother, John, and we call him Jack, Edward Sumner. <coughs> By it, we are reminded that through the universal dominion of death, our brother has finished his earthly labor, and that his account now rests with his God. This glove is an emblem of innocence and a token of friendship. And though death has severed and destroyed our social connection with our brother, let us remember that it has not weakened or impaired our obligations to the living. The evergreen is a Masonic emblem, is an emblem of Masonic faith in the immortality of the soul, or that better part of man, which neither cross, accident, pain, sickness, nor death itself can destroy, but shall continue to bloom with an eternal bajure from an ever beginning to a never ending eternity. Grand honors, brothers. His spirit to God, his memory in our hearts, his body to the earth, his spirit to God, his memory in our hearts, his body to the earth, his spirit to God, his memory in our hearts, his body to the earth. In conformity to an ancient and honored custom of free and accepted Masons, we are assembled here today to offer to the memory of our deceased brother the last tribute of our affection, thereby demonstrating our sincerity of our past esteem and our steadfast attachments to the principles of our order. May we who survive him anticipate our approaching faith and be more strongly united in the ties of union and friendship, that, allotted to the short space of our present existence, we may wisely and usefully employ our time, and in the reciprocal intercourse of kind and friendly acts, promote the welfare and happiness of each other. Unto his maker, we resign the body of our deceased friend and brother, 
earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, there to remain until the general resurrection. We pray, Almighty God, to comfort the hearts which have been stricken by this affliction and to extend his saving mercy to us all. And when the work of life is ended, may our hopes ripen into the fruition of everlasting bliss. And this we beg for the honor of his holy name, to whom be, to whom be glory now and forever. Father, so let us pray. Most holy and glorious Lord God, in whom we live and move and have our being, and before whom all men must appear in the judgment day to give an account of their deeds in life, we who are daily exposed to the flying shafts of death and now surround the mortal remains of our deceased friend, most earnestly beseech thee to grant us thy divine assistance to redeem our misspent time. And in the discharge of all the duties of this life, to grant us wisdom from on high to direct us, strength commensurate with our task to support us, and beauty of holiness to have rendered and adorn all our performances acceptable in thy sight. And when our work is done, and our bodies mingle with the Mother Earth, may our souls, disengaged from their cumbrous dust, flourish and bloom in eternal day, and through, the, and through thy divine mercy find rest made perfect in our home above, eternal in the heavens. So so Lord, indeed. Indeed. And to thy hands and keeping, O Lord, we resign the body of our, our friend and ourselves. May we receive light to guide us, courage to support us, and love to unite us now and forevermore. So Lord, indeed. Thank you.